Praise the Lord. He said, Praise the Lord. We rise up on our feet. A great God in heaven, we thank you and bless you for this moment. Thank you for journey mercies you granted everyone. Thank you for bringing your people here, young and old. Thank you, Lord, for all the locations where we're gathered together. Lord, we pray you visit us in a very special way in Jesus' name. We pray that from this night, your power will descend. The anointing that breaks the yoke will mightily present among us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you open the windows of heaven. And send the rain of blessing, the showers of blessing down upon everyone in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll be glorified and magnified. The church will be edified. And you bless everyone participating with us in this wonderful retreat in Jesus' name. We pray that no stone will be left unturned. No sickness will be left unhealed. No problem will be left unsolved. No sinner will remain lost and sinful in Jesus' name. And your power for living a life that is victorious, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Make this the best retreat we ever had in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that when it comes to the end of the retreat and we're going back home, We'll have testimony in every mouth, joy in every heart, happiness and fulfillment of your promises in everyone in Jesus' name. Be with your people, Lord. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. You can see that I welcome you once again to this retreat. This is a retreat. The Lord has brought us together in this location and also all over this land, all over Nigeria, all over the countries of Africa, and even beyond Africa. We're listening to the same thing, following the same program. And the power that God is manifesting here is manifesting everywhere. You are going to find that you are going to discover power for your hour. Say power for my hour. Say power for the present moment. It will come upon your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at this message now. Power for perilous times. Power for perilous times. The times in which we live. Dangerous times, perilous times, difficult times, trying times. It's like this moment, this hour, this time, the devil is doubling up and is trying to maneuver the lives of people. And many people do not know what to do, where to go, where to face. And because of such a terrible time, a trying time, that's why we have come together, so that whatever comes your way, you are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 5, This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And these are the last days, the signs we see, the news we hear, the happenings around us, the disasters all over the world, some caused by human beings, some just natural disaster. Everything we see telling us that these are dangerous, perilous, difficult, and trying times and the spirit of God says this know also look at verse 5 having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away it's telling us that as we see the difficulties of our time 
the temptations of our time, the trials of our time. Many, many people become religious, super religious, but even in the religion, they have not discovered the power. That's why it says they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And it says we should not be in such a company. We should discover the hour and the power and the anointing that breaks the yoke so that we will be as victorious as the Lord wants us to be. I pray you'll not be among the people that have a form of godliness, religion, without the power for the present hour. We're going to have the power. I said we're going to have the power. In fact, you'll see that from chapter 1 of this episode, the Lord is reminding us what we need is the power. Look at it in verse, chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. The tendency is for people to fear when they see the peril, the danger, the trials and the trouble. And all the things the world is going through. The, 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 the tendency is to be afraid. That's why some people even take their lives because they're depressed. They don't think that there's any solution for the problems they have in the present hour. But it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of power and of love and of a sound mind. I pray that you'll discover that before you go in Jesus' name. It tells us in chapter 4, chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. I'm reading there from verse 3. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come in all the religious gatherings and societies when they will not endure sound doctrine. That is, they see the problems are there, the troubles are there, the dangers are there, the period is there. But then the sound doctrine that will bring us out of such a problem, bring us out of such a situation, what the Lord has sent from on high is inspired word. It's infallible word. The word of power and the word of deliverance, the word of salvation that he has brought unto us. They will not endure. They will not accept. I pray that our gathering will not be a gathering like that. Religious gathering that will not accept the word of God. That will not give in to the word of God. That will not believe the word of God. That will not endure the word of God. You see, such a gathering will be in vain, will be useless, will not have any value, will not have any authority or deliverance for the people. It's when the people hear the word of God's sound doctrine and they give their hearts the lie and they believe that word that they hear, that is what brings the victory. But this is the time in which you are living, for the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But now, those of us who have the power, who have the courage, or the boldness, I don't have the success, the authority to stand at such a time like this. In verse 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. The power to endure, I pray God will give it to every one of us. And then it says, do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. As we gather here, evangelism continues. You find people around you. And they live as if they do not know the Lord. They act as if they do not know the Lord. You call them aside. And you evangelize. You win their souls to the Lord. And say, my friend, is this your first time of coming here? Do the work of an evangelist. And what do you know? What have you learned? And then you share the word of God together. And lead them to know in the Lord. And if there are backsliders around you. That they be coming to retreats before but then they have allowed the troubles of the day, the trauma of the day, the trials of the day to sway them off their feet. And now they are backsliding. And you see that from their doubts and their misgivings and all the things they say, their complaints. Then you bring them aside, do the work of an evangelist unashamedly, with authority, 
with boldness and with courage it tells us there when you have the power for the hour you'll be able to share the word of god and you'll say i am not ashamed of the gospel of the lord jesus christ because that gospel is the power of god unto salvation unto everyone who believes look at verse 18 and the lord shall deliver me from every evil war give me a good amen, amen. the lord will deliver us and you in particular the lord will deliver you in jesus name the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will pre preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever and everybody said amen, amen power for perilous times as we look at the times in which we are living and what the scripture is telling us we're looking at days number one man's perplexity in the present hour man's perplexity in the present hour if you're listening to the news you know that people are perplexed they are kind of preferred all solutions they know how but there's no solution and the problems are still there they taking this route and this route and that route and the problems are still there personal problems they're increasing family domestic problems they're increasing community problems clashes they're increasing nation against nation they're increasing and all these disasters they're increasing and now man is perplexed for the present hour but thank god there's a solution here today a solution for you a solution for me a solution for the people of god you'll discover it in jesus name number two manifold promises for the painful hour manifold promises for the painful hour when things are tough when things are difficult when everybody is falling when everybody is giving up the Lord has given us many promises. And by those many promises, you are going to be victorious. Number three, marvelous preservation in the perilous hour. Marvelous preservation in the perilous hour. Number one, man's perplexity in the present hour. As you look at that passage I read to you just now in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's what makes the time difficult. Selfishness, self-centeredness, people wanting to override overrun other people destroy other people that they may have their own way they want to make everybody unhappy that they might be happy they want to make themselves successful by making other people fail they want to stand alone by making other people fall that's the danger of the hour nobody is thinking about the happiness of others the joy of others the prosperity of others it says men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemous disobedient to parents unthankful unholy nobody is grateful nowadays i mean people outside there whatever parents do for children no gratitude whatever authorities do for their subjects no gratitude whatever any government does for the populace no gratitude whatever any church does for their members no gratitude that is the problem and then it says unholy there's no desire no passion for holiness and it is that that makes the human nature the depraved nature the sinful nature the adamic nature to come to the front because 
men are unthankful, ungodly, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, whatever promise they make to one another, they soon break the promise. And then it says, the false accusers, incontinent, fierce, that's related to violence. That's why you find many people fighting today. On the street, they fight. In their homes, they fight. We call it domestic violence. Breaking things, destroying things. They get angry so easily. The spices of those that are good. Traitors, heady. That's another word for being stubborn. High minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They want ease. They want pleasure. Rather than wanting the will of God or the word of God. It says these are the people, they have a form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. From such, what should we do? Tell me out loud. Turn away. Do it. Turn away. Luke chapter 21. Man's perplexity in this present hour. Man's perplexity in the present hour. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Those are the very words of Jesus. He tells us. As we come near the end of the age, as we come near the time of Christ coming again, it says there'll be perplexity. What we see on land, what we see in the sky, what we see on the sea, what we see in every community, it says these will be perilous times that will make people to be perplexed. They're so perplexed and confused. They didn't know what to do. In verse 26, a man's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken the powers in the sky in the stars of the sun of the moon it says it shall be shaken that's why it's saying the spirit of god is telling us that the days in which you are living the challenging days and you better discover the power for this hour for you to be able to live a victorious life and for you to be able to swim against the tide of the waves of the ocean that is coming upon the people of the world that's why the lord has brought us together at this time so that we look at the year that has come by and we look at the present moment and we look at the year that is coming and then we're saying by the grace of god in the strength of the lord the power for this moment the power for this hour and the power in the deepest of situations in the highest of the challenges the power we're going to receive and we're going to face the future with courage and boldness in jesus name in first timothy chapter 4 Looking at verse 1 and verse 2, telling us why the times in which we are living, why they are dangerous times, why they are perilous times, why these are times of confusion, times when people do not know what to do. And then the Lord says, To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Since you know that this is the hour we're living, when the evil spirits and the demonic spirits and Satan himself, the prince of the power of the air, when they're doing their very worst to make the people on earth confused and discouraged and to make them perplexed, when you know that this is the hour in which we're living, then you'll be able to fortify yourself, protect yourself, and you see the power that will carry you through. 
this power you're going to receive at this retreat will carry you through in Jesus name First Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith thank God it doesn't say all shall depart from the faith because I will never depart from the faith I said I will not depart from the faith some will I'm not going to be among them not many but some not all but some there will still be people that will remain in the faith and I'm making up my mind I'll be one of those people that will remain in the faith come with me whatever Satan will do whatever demons will do whatever unbelievers and backsliders will do you will remain in the faith in Jesus name but the spirit is speaking expressly very clearly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that's what brings the perplexity that's what brings the problem that's what makes people confused satan says something today the following day says another thing evil spirits say something today the following week they say another thing and you're confused and they go all over the world like that bringing confusion and perplexity it even says in verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron it appears that the people of the world they're so hard it and it's that like they've lost their conscience having their conscience seared had it with a hot iron but the lord is saying we will not bow we will not bend we will not backslide we're going to remain faithful to the very end in jesus name see what the people before us see what they faced and yet in the midst of it all we are able to have the power and the courage and the boldness to remain firm to the very edge and if god gave them the power he'll give us the power if he gave them the boldness to remain faithful and true he'll give us the boldness to remain faithful and true in jesus name second corinthians chapter four second corinthians chapter four verse eight we're troubled on every side yet not distressed we're perplexed but not in despair what a confession what a testimony paul the apostle said we've gone through it all the fire and the flood we've gone through it all the deep and in the valley we've gone through it all the confusion and the conflict we've gone through it all the trials and the trouble and he says we're troubled on every side yet we're not distressed we're perplexed we don't understand everything taking place in the world and yet we're not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also of jesus might be made manifest in a mortal body it says he's watched jesus christ looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith jesus went through it all and yet he remained victorious and he said we're suffering we're being persecuted we're going through the same thing that jesus went through so the life of christ the victorious overcoming life of christ we made manifest in us it says in verse 11 for we which live are always delivered unto death for jesus sake always delivered unto death that's what the persecutors want they want to destroy the believers but then it says that the life also of jesus might be made manifest in a mortal flesh so then death walketh in us but life in you how 
because of the faith we have. The faith we have will keep us above the waves, above the waters, above the trials, above the trouble. And you're going to find at the end of the message when we begin to pray that the power of God will come upon your life. If you have been shaking and you've been trembling and you've been wondering where well, I stand, I'm telling you today, today, you're going to stand in Jesus' name. Because you resist the devil with faith, with courage, with boldness. And that evil one trying to make you backslide, he'll turn away from you in Jesus' name. Verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith. Not spirit of fear, spirit of timidity, spirit of backsliding, spirit of cowardice. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. You'll speak what you believe. If you believe that you are more than a conqueror, you'll speak it out. If you believe that the devil will not overrun your life, you'll speak it out. If you believe you are receiving the power for your present hour, you'll speak it out. It says, we, according to the spirit of faith, will say what we believe. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might throw the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. You'll live to the glory of God. I will live to the glory of God. And this church as a whole will keep on living to the glory of God in Jesus' name. You know, it's when we live according to the word. When we live according to all that Christ is revealing to us that his glory, his power, his strength will be made manifest in us. And the reason why the Lord brought us here is so that that glory, the manifestation of his glory from on high will come upon our lives and that glory will be revealed in your life even from tonight in Jesus name. Everybody say glory. Not disgrace, not falling, not the devil rubbing your face on the ground in the mud, but glory, beauty, majesty, the power of the Lord coming upon your life. And it says, when the life of Christ is manifested in us and through us and through our mortal flesh, then it says, there'll be glory in our lives. In verse 16, for which cause? We faint not because our expectation is glory. Our expectation is majesty. Our expectation is living according to the purpose and the plan of the Lord. It says, because of that, we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That renewal will come in Jesus' name. Renewal in your spirit. Renewal in your mind. Renewal in your strengths. Renewal in your ability. Ability to face whatever. The devil may throw at you in these perplexing, perilous times. That the Lord will strengthen you day by day day in Jesus name in verse 17 for our light affliction it says all the things we'll ever go through will be light affliction all the challenges you'll ever go through will be light affliction all the temptations and trials you'll ever go through will be light affliction for a light affliction which is but for a moment walk it for us a for more exceeding and eternal wage of give me the word again glory looks like we're in for glory during this retreat you are in for glory during this retreat the power for your hour that brings the glory 
and the strength of the Lord upon your life. And it says, whatever the light affliction, in the midst of it all, there'll be glory upon our lives while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They are passing away. And then it says, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And those eternal blessings will be ours in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you. What are you going through? Dry those tears and take away that depression. And understand that as we come here for this retreat, the power of the Lord will be sufficient for you. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you. The mercy of the Lord will be sufficient for you. And then every prayer we pray here, the power will come down. Abundant grace will come down and there will be the sufficiency in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That's the reason why you have a duty, you have a role to play, you have a responsibility. What are you to do? Because the power is available. The strength is available. The courage is available. The boldness is available. And everything you need for this present hour, everything you need for this present situation, Everything provided by Christ from Calvary. And now you have a part to play. To go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here is my need. The mercy I need. The strength I need. The power I need. The courage I need. The boldness I need. And then the Lord will give it unto us. In Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You'll be strong in the Lord. There's no way you can be strong outside the Lord. Without me, you can do nothing. It's when you come into the Lord more and more. You pray that, Lord, I want to abide in you. Or you abide in me and your word abide in me. When you come more and more into the Lord, then you become more and more strong. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on. You have to put this one on. It's not just hearing the preaching and not praying. It's not just coming to a street and not doing something. Put it on. The power is available. Put it on. The strength is available. Put it on. And all everything you need for the present moment and the present hour. Available. Put it on. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is why some people give up. The principalities and powers are too strong for them. The rulers of this age, they're too strong for them. And the spiritual wickedness, wicked spirits in high places, they're too strong for them. But when we put on the power of God, nothing will be too strong for you to confront. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That she may be able to withstand in what kind of day? In the evil day, this evil day, this perilous time, we're going to stand. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, we need this above all, beyond all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many darts? How many darts? 
all the furry darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God pray 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 always you know there are people that have turned the retreat to a social affair and they come in here just how are you how are you the retreat time is praying time if you're going to have the power if you're going to overcome if you're going to be more than a conqueror if what you expect after the retreat is going to be greater and higher than what you were before the retreat time it's pray time during the retreat praying always it's not a playing time it's socializing time eating time just fellowship time praying because that's how sinners get saved seek the lord that's how believers get sanctified seek the lord that house that is how sanctified people get baptized in the holy ghost seek the lord that's why those who are cowards in evangelism that's how you become strengthened to evangelize seek the lord praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. We're going to pray according to the promises of the Lord. That leads me to point number two. The manifold promises for the painful hour. Manifold promises for the painful hour. In Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 5. Joshua was going to face some real challenging times. The people of Canaan did not want them to come into Canaan. And those Jericho walls were very high and very deep and very thick. And yet the Lord was giving them a great promise. They were going to go in and possess. Like we are going to go into the new year, we are going to possess. And if that is the case, we need to look at the promises of God and then pray in line according to those promises of the Lord. Joshua chapter 1, manifold promises for the painful hour, for the perilous hour. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of of thy life i thought you'll give me a good good amen you know why people backslide people who face them are stronger than them you know why people turn their back on the lord because the challenges they face the river they want to swim through is too deep for them and the lord is saying you will not backslide I said the Lord is saying you will not backslide because there shall not any man any man and that's why some people in the village don't want to come to church they are afraid of some men some men of evil power of faculty power but the promise we have for you this end of the year and coming to the new year is that no herbalists will be able to stand before you no cultic man will be able to stand before you you know why some people are so much afraid they cannot serve the lord they cannot follow through on sound doctrine because there's some persecutors there's some people that threaten them if you go to that church if you believe that bible if you take the totality of the word of god and you live like that if you stand for what you ought to stand for we're going to do this and this and because they cannot stand before the enemy that's why they chicken out cowards well thank god tonight there shall no man no man i said no man there shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life as your days so will your strength be 
Then it says, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Before the magicians, the Lord was with Moses. Before Pharaoh, the Lord was with Moses. Before the chariots of Egypt, when they were by the Red Sea, the Lord was with Moses. Before the Amalekites that came against them, the Lord was with Moses. And before Balaam, Balak, the false prophet, the Lord was with Moses. And the Lord was telling Joshua, you have nothing to fear. Because as I was with Moses, even so will I be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. I will be strong. I said I will be strong. You know what? As I read this, I realize the Lord is saying, you have the ability and the skill, the capacity to be strong. That's why I gave the command. The Lord never commands anything you cannot do. If the Lord knew you could not be strong, he'll not tell you to be strong. If the Lord knew you could not be courageous, he'll not tell you to be courageous. He knew you have the ability within you, the skill within you. And you have the mind within you. He knows that he's giving you enough grace, enough support, enough sustenance. That's why he says, with what you have, and with who you have, and with the faith you have, and with the promises I've given you, be strong and be very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left. You know, these are days when churches are modifying their doctrines. What you say is a new period, 21st century. And you say, what our forefathers believed, we cannot believe that now. The way our forefathers lived, we cannot live like that now. It's a time of modification. This is a period of mutilating the gospel. But the Lord is telling us, He says, I'm standing by you. And if I'm going to remain by you, you don't modify anything or edit anything or change anything. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Keep to the whole word of God that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. We're going to prosper. We're going to succeed and nothing will make us cringe or fall back in Jesus' name. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have what kind of success? Good success. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm telling you that these are the days of his power. The days when the Lord himself is going to make every one of us that believe in him victorious. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 10. Manifold promises. For the painful hour. Whatever you are going through today, there is a promise for you. And when you hold on to that promise, it will bring you out of that problem. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. The one that never lost any battle said, I am with thee. The creator of the heavens and the earth said, I am with thee. The great physician that heals every sickness, he says, fear thou not, I am with thee. The master of storm and the master of all circumstances, he assures you, he says, fear thou not, because I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. 
Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that are angry against thee, incensed against thee, all they that are kind of heated up against you shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They shall be as nothing. 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 Yeah. You know why people don't want to worship the Lord? I told you before. Somebody is threatening them. Somebody is saying, you dare not do that. Now, if somebody who is a non-entity or a nobody or nothing threatens you, and you know that the power is boasting about is nothing, the authority is boasting about is nothing, you're not going to allow that to disturb you, disturb your mind, because nobody can take away from the blessing God wants to give you at this retreat. And nobody can injure you or hurt your life, because all the people that get angry against you, They'll hurt themselves. They'll become as nothing. Behold, all they, how many of them? All they, how many of them? All they that were incensed and angry against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive, they that fight, they that war against thee shall shall perish what have you got to fear when the lord has given you such a promise manifold promises for the painful hour thou shalt seek them and shall not find them even them that contended with thee they that war against thee shall be as nothing second time and as a sin of naught for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. The Lord will help you. Fear not, thou one Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having cheese thou shalt thresh all the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff thou shalt find them and the wind shall carry them away and the wild wind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord what will you do in the Lord what are you going to do in the Lord? Thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. That's the promise the Lord has given us and the Lord is going to fulfill that promise in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7 through to verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. Say not, I am a youth. Say not, I am a babe. Say not, I am inexperienced. Say not, I am weak. You are no more weak, you are strong. Because you are going to receive the power for your hour, even during this retreat, even tonight in Jesus' name. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of what? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. That's what you're afraid of. You don't know their thoughts. You don't know their mind. You don't know their heart. All you see is their face. And you think that... Because their face is rough and tough. Therefore, they are mighty and powerful. Not necessarily. So, Jeremiah or any other person there, be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. 
Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Where is the word of God today? Where is the word of the Lord today? Speak it out then. If the word is in your mouth, when you see a sinner, speak out that word. When you see somebody who is sick, speak out that word. When you see somebody who is discouraged, the word is in your mouth. Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. Speak it out to them. And the word you speak out will solve their problems in Jesus' name. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant verse 17 thou therefore get up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that i command thee be not dismayed at their faces lest i confound thee before them for behold i have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and bracing walls against the whole land against the kings of judah against the princes thereof against the priests thereof and against the people of the land they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for i am with thee says the lord to deliver thee the lord will deliver you deliver us all in jesus name dangerous times but wonderful time very lost times but time of power time of authority and time when the power of god will be manifested through you and through me and through us and through this church in jesus name we've seen a lot of miracles before we're going to see more We've seen victory before. We're going to see greater victory. We've seen authority be manifested in the name of Jesus before. We're going to see more authority as the days go by. Coming year, this coming year, it's going to be a year of power. A year of achievement. A year of authority. A year of accomplishment in Jesus' name. Because it says, I give unto you power. Let me read it to you in Luke chapter 10. The power for your hour. The power. For your hour and whatever the painful hour the perilous hour we're going to have the power that will match the problem of the day luke chapter 10 verse 17 and the 17 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them i beheld I beheld, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. We will not fall, they will fall. I said, we will not fall, they will fall. Even their master will fall. Their commander will fall. Their captain will fall said i see i saw satan as lightning fall from heaven and now come something for this hour behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I pray that every one of us will be participants and recipients of that great power in Jesus' name. Point number three now, marvelous preservation in the perilous hour marvelous preservation in the perilous hour this difficult time the lord will protect you specially preserve you specially and all the things happening to the people of the world will not come near you in jesus name 
it may be on the right hand or left hand but where you are the wrath of men will not fall there in jesus name exodus chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 5 the lord will make a difference a difference between the people of god and the people of the world exodus chapter 11 verse 5 Exodus 11, verse 5. For all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that seated upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maid servant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of the beast, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. But here comes the difference. You are going to be different. Protection will be around you. Preservation will be for you. The calamities happening to the people of the world will not happen to you in Jesus' name. But in verse 7, against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that she may know that how that the lord does put a difference between the egyptians and israel the lord will put a difference between us and the people of the world in jesus name their fire will not burn us their river will not drown us their trouble will not perplex us the sicknesses will not come upon us. We are going to be different. The protection of the Lord will be ours. The preservation of the Lord will be ours. And the Lord will surround us like a mighty wall. A mighty wall of fire. And all those things that try to hurt us. All the things that try to come against us. They will be burnt. In the fury and the furnace of his fire in Jesus' name. And when the people of the world, when they kindle their fire, thinking they are going to burn us up, they will not burn us up, only their property will burn in Jesus' name. <laughs> Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 15. This was a perilous hour for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. A painful hour for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was a trying time because the king of the land, Nebuchadnezzar, threatened them. And he actually wanted to carry out a threat. And then he said, If you think you're serving God, if you think there's a God somewhere that will deliver you, think about this again. Because I've done this to other people before and they were not free. I burnt them up. And then we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is your own day. I said, this is your own day. <laughs> like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were preserved. You are going to be preserved in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 3 verse 15. Now, if you be ready. At what time you hear the sound of the cornage, flute, harp, sackbut, satri, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, that will be all right, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of a burning very furnace and who is that god that shall deliver you out of my hands can you imagine a mortal man whose breath is in his nostrils can you imagine a mortal man who when he sleeps he forgets himself can you imagine a mortal man a man of yesterday challenging the god of eternity and said, who is that God? That's how people act today. They don't have any respect for God. But 
the hour has come, God will prove himself. And this threat him. If you get saved, will persecute you. If you remain a Bible believer, we're going to throw something at you. And they say, when we throw it at you, we're going to curse you and do this and that. They say, who is that God? I'm happy they are asking that question. The Lord is going to show them tonight who that God is. The same God that drowned Pharaoh and those Egyptians in the Red Sea, that God is still alive. And the same God that made all those Amalekites to be totally forsaken and defeated, that God is still alive. And the same God that made the Assyrian army, 185,000 of them to perish in one night, that God is still alive. The same God that made Nebuchadnezzar go into the forest of the bush like an animal, that God is still alive. Look at this man challenging the almighty God. And if your enemies challenge the almighty God, you rejoice because you know this painful hour is going to be a victorious hour. It's going to be a powerful hour. And the Lord is going to prove himself strong on behalf of everyone believing the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. He asked the question, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. He will deliver you. I said he will deliver you and he will deliver us all together as a church in Jesus name but if not be it known unto you O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up what they were saying is he can make your fire not to even light at all not to be kindled at all but even if he allows it to be kindled even if he doesn't deliver us before we get into the furnace all the same we're not going to serve your idol we're not going to worship your image we're going to stand by the creator of the heavens and the earth you will stand in jesus name then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was angry. You know, sometimes you say, I must be careful now. I mustn't allow Nebuchadnezzar to be angry. Go ahead. Let him get angry. Because the anger of man will reveal the glory and the power and the majesty of God. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And therefore, he spake and he commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was one to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his kingdom, in his army, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And to cast them into the burning furry furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and their horses and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning furry furnace. Did they cry? Did they complain? Did they regret? Did they plead? I wonder for you who are going, you are begging the persecutor and begging the enemies of righteousness. I'm begging the people that say, we're going to throw you in there. Let them do it. And then we're going to see the mighty power of the Lord that God says, I am God, I change not. Therefore, the people of God are not consumed. Our God remains the same today. I said our God remains the same today. Look at the next verse. Therefore, verse 22. Because 
the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot. The flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the enemies of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that died. But Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, did they die? You will not die. I said you will not die. You still remain in the faith even after they've done their worst. That's why it says, and then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound into the midst of the burning furry furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true O king he answered and said lo I see how many four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and you will have no hurt and I will have no hurt and we as a church will have no hurt because the form of the falls is like the son of God that's Emmanuel, God with us. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Because in the midst of the fairy furnace, he'll be with us. In the midst of the fire, he'll be with us. In the midst of the trouble, he'll be with us. In the midst of the trial, he'll be with us. In the midst of the sickness, he'll be with us. In the midst of the affliction, he will be with us in Jesus' name. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the bony furry furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of who? I thought you said, where is that God? He discovered where that God is. God is seated on the throne. And God is seated in glory and majesty and power. And God is able to protect his own. And when he finishes protecting us, protecting you and protecting me and, and prote protecting the church, they'll confess with their mouth that we are the children and the servants of the Most High God. Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire and the princes and the governors and the captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an ear of them a singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire passed on them then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word. They didn't change the word of God, they changed the word of Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't change their Bible, they didn't modify the doctrine. They didn't change to please the people of the world. But they changed the word of the king of Nebuchadnezzar. And they yielded their bodies. That they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people and nation and language which shall speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego shall be caught in pieces and the houses shall be made a don't heal because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort that god is still alive he'll deliver you in jesus name we're looking at some night one some night one we see the promise the lord has made and we see the manifold preservation and the Marvelous preservation, even in the hour of peril. Psalm 91, I read from verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place 
of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's what the Lord is calling you. Come under that shadow. If you are not born again yet, come. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess your sins to the Lord. Let him forgive you. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash you whiter than snow. And then you come under the protection of the Almighty. If you have been a backslider, you were saved before. But now you have gone back into adultery and fornication. Smoking and drinking. Stealing from the office. Or stealing from other people. The Lord is calling you. That perilous times are here. Painful times are here. Difficult, dangerous times in the world at this time. And the only people that are going to escape are the people that come out of their sin. And they come out of the fury of the judgment that's about to fall. And you come under the protection of Calvary. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be restored. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely it will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence if you are saved if you are forsaken your sin if you are believed on the lord jesus christ if you are abiding under the shadow of the almighty if you allow calvary to cover you protect you then it says you'll be able, you'll have protection from the snow of the father it shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noon day a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at the right hand but it shall not come near thee we're going to read that again a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right hand but it shall not come near me it shall not come near me if you are saved if you are saved if you are saved if you are born again if you are free from sin if the blood of Jesus has washed you whiter than snow, if you're abiding in the Lord and the word of God is abiding in you, if you're abiding and residing in the secret place of the Most High, a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou see and behold the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any play come near thy dwelling but check up check up check up check up if you are abiding in the lord saved sins forgiven transformed and changed because that's the condition then it says it goes on in verse 11 for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder and the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet and then it says because he has set his love upon me therefore i will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer. Tonight, God will answer your prayer. When you call upon the Lord with a true heart, when you call upon the Lord from a repentant heart, when you call upon the Lord with a humble heart, he says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. And then he says, I will deliver him and I will honor him. I will be with him in trouble. And now it says, and with, verse 16, and with, 
That's a preserved man, a preserved woman. That's a preserved child of God. You will not die before your time. With long life will I satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. I want to tell you we have power for this painful hour. We have power for this perilous hour. And the moment you call upon the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I give myself to you. And I bring myself under the protection of the blood of the Lamb. The protection of the Lord the preservation of the Lord and the power of the Lord will work mightily for you in Jesus name we're going to rise up now we're going to pray to the Lord begin the retreat of prayer begin this retreat with a serious mind begin this retreat with a committed heart a consecrated heart saying oh Lord I came for power for this perilous hour we're going to make this retreat a different kind of retreat by the kind of prayer we pray and the kind of power that comes upon our lives open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer if you are not born again yet you know if you're still living in sin you know if you're a backslider you know if you're still following after the devil yielding to temptation you know you want to come to the Lord and say Lord I'm sorry and hand over your life completely unto the Lord and say Lord here am I I yield I surrender my life unto you and then the power for your hour preservation for your hour protection for your hour adequate abundant provision for your hour call upon the name of the Lord let this retreat be a retreat of restoration a retreat of salvation a retreat of revival a retreat of renewal and whatever it is in your life that will expose you to the enemy expose you to the peril and the dangers of the hour confess and forsake don't think about other people just between you and the Lord today that's your relationship with the Lord are you like the people of the world ah you expose yourself to the danger and the peril in this perilous hour sinning like they are sinning stealing like they are stealing committing adultery like they are committing adultery being occultic like they are occultic you expose yourself to the peril the danger of this present hour call upon the name of the lord this mountain will not crush you this difficulty will not destroy you believe the fire of Nebuchadnezzar will not burn you up believe Lord I believe Lord I believe the victory is in believing the power is in believing the protection is in believing the courage to conquer is in believing don't believe your enemy believe the Lord don't believe Nebuchadnezzar believe the Lord our God is greater don't believe in your sickness believe in the healer believe and you will see the glory of God believe and you will see the glory of the Lord believe 